Hello friends, and welcome back to the Fun Hipster channel. I am Jonathan. And today, we will be tasting none other than the luxury mustard brand of Grey Poupon. If you are familiar with the commercials, um, you would say, oh, pardon me, would you have any Grey Poupon? And, uh, yeah, that was a commercial that popularized Grey Poupon in America as a luxury mustard. Um, it's not really that luxurious. It is a Dijon mustard, which means that it is made with white wine and it originates in the Dijon area of France. True Dijon mustard can only be made in Dijon, France. Similar to how champagne can only be made in the Champagne region. But many other things are called champagne. Many other things are called Dijon mustard that are not. This is actually made in Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, to be specific. Um, but that was not always the case. In fact, Grey Poupon was made originally in the Dijon region of France, beginning back in 1866 by a gentleman of the name Maurice Gray. Now, he had created a machine that would produce Dijon mustard quicker than earlier methods, um, but he would later improve on that with the help of financing by a man by the name of, I had it right here, but now it's out of my sight. Well, the last name is Poupon. Uh, Auguste Poupon. And that was, uh, that was in 1866. Um, his original machine was made in 1855. Then, years later, in 1946, the brand, Grey Poupon, was purchased by the Hublin Company. Um, and they actually only bought the rights to sell it in America. Back in Europe, it was still owned by the original uh, Maurice Gray Auguste Poupon company that made that. Um, in America, the R.G. Reynolds Tobacco Company acquired Hublin in 1982 and merged it with Nabisco um, in 1985. And then in 1999, Kraft Foods bought Nabisco, and that's why Kraft today is the maker of Grey Poupon. Um, and in that 1999 move, they moved the uh, production of it to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Now, back in Europe, um, the, um, it was bought by a company called Amora Mail, and that was just another mustard company. Um, they bought it and they kind of used their equipment and stuff, but in Europe you could not buy Grey Poupon. They just bought out the name, the rights, and the building, the manufacturing, and changed everything to Mail. It's M-A-I-L-L-E, and you can actually still find this. Even in America today, you can find this in some uh, stores like... Um, world market or places that have uh, items that are made from Europe for European sale but then have had like a new label kind of like stickered over the old one in order to be sold in the United States. But anyway, that was a bot in the, th the year 2000 by Unilever and the UK trademark to Grape Upon is now owned by Unilever um, and then in 2005 sold to uh, G. Costa and Company Limited, a subsidiary of Associated British Foods. Uh, and then in 2008, Associated British Foods folded G. Costa into AB World Foods. Um, so, AB World Foods currently owns the European copyright to Grey Poupon, um, even though I'm pretty sure they still just sell it under the mail uh, brand. Um, 
The production was in Holland, Michigan until they moved it to Pennsylvania following Kraft's uh, purchase and expansion. Anyway, let's go ahead and taste some Grey Poupon. I know if you've read the title of this, you know this is not what I'm going to be doing. But I thought it was necessary. I'm just going to taste a little spoonful of Grey Poupon and tell you what it tastes like. You know, I really like Grey Poupon. Some sandwiches mix in to make a sauce. However, straight up, the mustard is really intense. It gives you that burning sensation in your nose and nostrils. But, I still enjoy it. I still like it. Uh, the mustard seeds for Grey Poupon are actually grown in Canada. Interesting fact. The Dijon mustard that's made in France, currently most of that uses Canadian mustard seeds. Due to rules and regulations that the European Union has passed, uh, it has prevented a lot of people in Europe from growing mustard seeds. I'm not exactly sure what those rules and regulations are, but I did watch a short documentary about it. Um, and originally, black mustard seeds were used for Dijon. Uh, however, in, Can in Canada, they grow yellow mustard seeds and brown mustard seeds for Dijon. Although there are some black mustard seeds that are still grown, those usually go to uh, Europe for their Dijon, because black mustard seeds are actually more authentically Dijon than brown and yellow. There are still some small uh, businesses in Europe that you can find that use European grown black mustard seeds. However, that is the minority and not the typical, usual. Anyway, let's get to what I really tasted Grey Poupon for and why I gave you all that information. Because right now, Van Leeuwen, the same company that brought you the pizza ice cream, which they should have partnered with Marvel for, has now created this Grey Poupon. And, you know, they also made that macaroni and cheese ice cream, which was with Kraft. Interestingly enough, Kraft was the Grey Poupon. Maybe there's another one coming out soon with another Kraft product. Maybe they signed like a three item deal. Who knows? Let's see if Grey Poupon tastes good in ice cream. This also has salted pretzels in it. So here's what it looks like. It is a yellowish color. Um, I see chunks. I see swirls. I wonder if the swirls are swirls of uh, mustard. First, I'm going to taste this, the base ice cream. The swirls must be the mustard because the base ice cream, all I'm picking up is like a vanilla flavor to it. It's a good vanilla flavor. Now let's get a scoop when we go through that swirl and also get some of those pretzel chunks. The pretzel chunks seem to have lost their salt. Maybe the salt is somewhere else in this thing. They're not very salty and they've lost their crunch. I know it's hard to add things to ice cream and still maintain a similar texture um, from when they're not an ice cream, but I taste a lot of Jenny's ice cream. And she does a great job of maintaining the original texture flavor of items when she puts them in ice cream. And I think what she does is she just doesn't take something like pretzel and put it in ice cream. 
she kind of like recreates a recipe for let's say a pretzel so that the new recipe works well in ice cream and when it is cold in an ice cream it has a similar texture and flavor that you remember from a pretzel you just eating out of a bag and I think what Van Leeuwen did is just took pretzels and put it in ice cream it's not bad but I'm just um, throwing out some love for Jenny's ear because that's my favorite ice cream let's keep tasting it I really haven't got like any really extreme mustardy flavors yet The pretzels do have a pretzel-y flavor to them, minus like the salt you would get on a pretzel, but that like brownish, goldeny wheat flavor. You know, occasionally, I think I'm getting some like. Dijon notes but like whereas the mac and cheese one it was all that yellow color every bite tasted just like Kraft macaroni and cheese powder This does not have a really Dijon flavor. I'm trying to like eat more and not give up. Because I have had reviews I've done before where I just didn't eat enough of it. And something was like different in a different layer. Alright, this this bite that has like a mustard yellow hint to it right there in the middle. This one doesn't taste like mustard. I don't think any of it's going to. No, it really didn't. There's like a pocket down here that I'm going to try to get out. I'm going to read the ingredients to see if, like, grape upon invention. Cream, milk, cane sugar, unbleached, enriched wheat flour, egg yolks, honey, white wine, distilled vinegar, water, mustard seed, pectin, salt, spices, malt, soybean, oil, coconut oil, sea salt. What are the ingredients of the German mustard? Distilled white vinegar. There is distilled vinegar in here. Mustard seed. There's mustard seed in there. Water. There's water in there. Salt and white wine. There's wine. There's white wine. There's salt. Citric acid, tartaric acid. I don't see those in there. Fruit pectin, sugar, and spices. There's pectin. Of course, there's sugar. Um, it does say spices as well. Hmm. So it doesn't have citric acid or tartaric acid. I wonder how much each, each of those affect flavor, or if they're more there for preserving. But, you know what I'm going to do? Not tasting enough like grape pecan, so I'm gonna take just a little bit because I don't want to like ruin the whole thing if this ends up being bad. I'm gonna put it right on the top. I'm just gonna take a few bites 
right from the top of it with some of this real Grey Poupon mustard on it. Let's see if it's better this way. Scoop of it, the last bits of it left on there. Real. Mm. It definitely does make it taste more great Poupani. But one thing I did notice is when it mixes with the ice cream, it gets, I don't know if it's the cold or the cream, but whatever's in the ice cream, it really deadens the mustard heat, which I think is what I was missing when I was like, this doesn't taste too much like mustard. Something about ice cream is like deadening the mustardiness. Of Grey Poupon, because even when I put it directly on the top and took some bites of it, yes, it did increase the uh, mustard essence, but a lot of what I felt was missing was still missing, if you understand that. Um, we'll try to say that. It's just not, I don't know if there, there, maybe there's just not a compatible flavor. Maybe the experience you get from like a fresh Dijon mustard doesn't translate well to ice cream, either due to cold or whatever ingredients are on here. Um, so this ice cream is is not terrible. Um, some people might be like, oh, gross mustard in ice cream. The fact that like you don't really get too much mustard should tell you like this it's not uh if you don't like mustard it's not gonna like ruin ice cream for you um mostly this tastes like ice cream with some unsalted pretzel in it uh would i suggest you run out and grab this one not really um the gray poupon doesn't translate it doesn't uh come through so if you're if you looked at this and was like, yeah, I really like mustard, so I want to try this ice cream, you're going to be disappointed. And if you don't like mustard, you probably wouldn't want to try this anyway. And there's other ice creams that have pretzel in them that you'll probably like a whole lot better. So this one, I'm going to kind of give it a fail to Van Leeuwen. Um, before I exit this video, I'm going to do one more thing that I forgot to look up. Because they had a they had a whole bunch of new flavors and I've tried them all, so I want to tell you about it. I think these are all of them. They had five new flavors. I tried all five. So the Grey Poupon one was the one I saved for this video review. But they had Campfire S'mores. Thumbs up. They had Espresso Fior O Latte Chip. Thumbs up. Honey Cornbread with Strawberry Jam. Yeah. Jenny's has a much better strawberry one that has like a. Oh, they have. Hold on. The last one was Peach Crisp. Uh, Summer Peach Crisp. Again, those two. Jenny's has similar ones. Jenny's has a strawberry pretzel pie one that was really good. And Jenny's also has a Biscuits and Peaches one. 
that is delicious. And if you have those and you try the Van Lee one, you're going to be like, why would I get this? And the Jenny's ones is just so much better. Um, but the espresso chip and the s'mores ones were both really good. Uh, the espresso chip one probably was my one I was most impressed by. Uh, the chips in there, they stay a little crunchy when you bite into them. And uh, the s'mores one has like nice like marshmallowy ribbons inside of it that turned out really well. But this video was especially about the Grey Poupon one. It was uh, more on the disappointing end. And unlike the macaroni and cheese one, which like I would definitely go out and get again, I would probably not ever try this one again. Uh, there's just so many of the better ice cream flavors out there. But like I said, a mac and cheese ice cream that they made has it, it's so unique and actually really good that basically every time they come out with it, I see it, I'm gonna get it again because that was just that enjoyable. Anyway. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next one. And whenever Van Lee one comes out with another limited edition that sounds interesting and terrific, I'll definitely try it and tell you what I think. But until then, we'll see you later.